everyone, welcome back to my channel. You already know what this week's video is about, so let's just get straight into it because it's going to be a long one. Before this video starts, I just want to say a little disclaimer. I'm extremely blessed to have been born into the family that I was born into, and I'm aware that a lot of people aren't as fortunate as I have been. So, with that out of the way, let's jump into my writing story. So dramatic really not that dramatic but so I may look like a 12 year old but I'm actually 20 turning 21 in August so that means I was born in 1998 why is that relevant to this video well because the technology that was used back then was not that great so we're gonna have to go back in time and dig out some really old tapes and when I say tapes I literally mean and when I say tapes I literally mean tapes please excuse the quality of some of these videos and photos they are not great and it's because I was born in the stone age pretty much from the beginning, I lived and breathed horses. My mum is super horsey. She used to be a three-day eventer and has been running a riding school for over 20 years. My first proper pony was Guy, a 12-2 Welsh mountain pony. My mum taught me how to ride and when I was really little, I would just ride at home with her and the clients. I competed in my first show at the age of three. It was a rider class. I actually did fall off and was hanging by my foot in the stirrup before I even went into the ring, but I was determined to get back on and compete. I got second in the class and it was my first ever ribbon. This show definitely sparked my love for competing. Smile for the camera. One hundred percent the smallest and the youngest in that whole class. Look how big that kid in front of me is. A little job for sliding up the leg. <laughs> By three and a half, I was cantering off the lead. My childhood is filled with memories of riding Guy and competing. As I got more confident, I started jumping. On cross country, when I was little, I had to walk over the jumps as otherwise Guy would leap over them. He wasn't the easiest pony. He was forward moving, and when he was excited, he would canter on the spot and do many rears. Oh, were you holding on to me in case he did a big one? Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Guy and I competed in everything. Guy and I were also members of a pony club, which I stayed a member of until I was a teenager. We represented our club in a number of small events. Around the age of four or five, I competed a first dressage test off the lead rein at a one day event. My mum had two young horses, so I was just competing them at 85. She would enter me in the same class, but I would only do the dressage. Mum tells me that a lot of people would come up to her and ask if I was going to do the cross country. <laughs> This dressage test was definitely interesting. I made one course error, but the judge was so lovely and gave me a ribbon, which mum says was because of my cute factor, but I'm definitely sure it was because I did the most fabulous dressage test. Mm -hmm. 
There are so many photos and videos I could use that show my progress at this age. Sadly, when I was around 7 or 8 years old, my time with Guy was cut short as Guy passed away suddenly and unexpectedly. It broke my little heart. To try and help me process the grief, Mum put together a ribbon blanket of some of the ribbons we had won together. I still have it today and it makes me so proud to see what I accomplished at such a young age. It's bigger than my bed and yes, there are more ribbons that I won on Guy. After a few months of Guy's passing, we bought Dandy, a 13-1 Shetland Arab cross. Yes, a Shetland Arab cross, an interesting breed. Dandy gave me the confidence I have today in my writing ability. He taught me passion, trust and compassion. Dandy took me through the heights. When I was 11, I was selected to represent my pony club at South Island Pony Club Show Jumping Championships. Unfortunately, I can't find any photos or videos of us, but the memories make me smile to this day. This was my biggest show I'd ever competed in and was such an amazing experience. We had to travel around four hours down south for this show, so it was definitely an exciting time. I'm extremely blessed to still have Dandy in my life today, 10 years later. He's the most perfect pony you could ever ask for. He's also the safest pony I know. You can do anything with him. This video is one of my first times riding him completely tactless. You'd think he'd done it his whole life. Dandy continues to teach young riders about the equestrian world today, as he is one of the all-time favourites in the riding school. Unfortunately, I outgrew Dandy, so we bought Hobo, a 14-1 Connemara. When we first got him, he was literally scared of coloured poles and would refuse to go anywhere near them, no matter who was on him. I competed him a few times and he went well, but he definitely made me ride for it. Unfortunately, Hobo and I didn't click as a combination. However, we still own Hobo and he is used in the riding school where he grows the leg muscles of young riders. After Hobo, I moved on to riding and competing Sebastian, a 16-1 Frisian thoroughbred cross who my mum had bred and trained herself. He was my mum's competition horse and she had lessons on him with Mark Todd who also rode him. Sebastian made the transition from ponies to hacks so smooth and easy, something I am immensely grateful for. He helped build my love for dressage and helped me to become an even more still and soft rider. I competed him in everything as well. It wasn't always easy though. He taught me how to ride stops in the cross country and how to deal with them. Sadly, at the end of 2018, we lost Sebastian to a severe case of colic. It broke our family's hearts. It was like losing a family member. However, jumping back in time to 2012, I moved on from Sebastian as we bought a 15-2 named Toby. My journey with Toby was very difficult. He was by far the hardest horse I've ever owned and ridden. However, there were happy times. Unfortunately, we had to put Toby down as he had an accident in the paddock. We also found out that his progressively worsening behaviour was caused by his spine fusing under his wither. Although we had our tough times, Toby taught me patience, persistence, and how to get straight back up after a fall. He also taught me how to ride vertical bucks and rears and gave me the stickability I have today. During the majority of 2012, I was horseless. I still rode Dandy and Sebastian, but it wasn't the same as owning your own horse. 
I did, however, meet some of my writing inspirations like Caroline Powell, Andrew Nicholson, Jock Pageant, and my all-time favourite, Janelle Richards, who is now Janelle Price. I also met Mark Todd again, however, I had met him a handful of times before. In December 2012, we bought the famous Splash, a 15-hand high blue roan pinto, who I'm sure most of you know is my current horse. Splash and I clicked instantly. The journey I've had with Splash is way too big to fit into this video. Our dressage definitely did not look like this in our first few months together, that's for sure. We continue to represent our pony club at teams, competitions, and Splash also took me through the eventing show jumping dressage grades. In 2013, my dressage coach at the time asked me to perform at her public display. A few hundred people turned up to watch and the experience was incredible. I rode Dandy as she needed a white pony. I think it's every girl's dream to ride a white horse in a flowing dress to beautiful music in front of hundreds of people. It is definitely one of my favourite memories with Dandy. The wee ballerina was so lovely to work with and I think all our hard work paid off. Thank you, Kate. Beautiful display. Thank you, Jamie. 2013 as a whole was an incredible year with Splash. We were training with our dream coach, jumping up to a metre 30, competing almost every weekend and never coming home without a top six placing. However, in August 2013, we had a serious riding accident. I've made a video about it on my channel. I lost a huge amount of confidence in my riding ability and it is very evident in these next few videos. My second show back after my rotational was South Island Pony Club Show Jumping Championships. Thankfully, time, patience and determination helped heal a lot of my confidence issues. Splash and I returned to competing and we were also back in our winning form, but most importantly, our bond grew immensely. We tackled our fear of cross country head on and even schooled up to a metre 10 in this discipline. During 2015, I also leased a 17 hand high Clyde St. James Irish Hunter Cross named Mac. He was an amazing horse. However, in November 2015, I was hospitalized for three months, so we had to take Mac home. During my time with Mac, I learned so much, but one of the most important lessons I learned was that no horse will ever replace Splash. I've never had such a strong connection with a horse like this before. It's the most amazing feeling. It's also amazing and extremely humbling to be able to say that we survived an accident, persevered with each other, and faced our fears together. Splash, I honestly do not know where I would be without you today. You are my best friend and I would not be able to get through life without you. No words will ever be able to express the gratitude I have. He is truly one in a million and each day I get to spend with him in my life is an honour.